A deal between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland involving a new naval base has further worsened diplomatic relations with Somalia. Its government is furious at the agreement, which would give landlocked Ethiopia access to the sea. Why is this dispute worsening and could there be wider consequences? This is Inside Story. Hello there, I'm James Bayes. Somalia has ordered out Ethiopia's ambassador, recalled its own from Addis Ababa, and demanded that two Ethiopian consulates be shut down. The row between the neighbours is centred on a deal Ethiopia has done with Somaliland, a breakaway region claimed by Somalia. Part of the agreement would give landlocked Ethiopia access to the Red Sea. So far, it's only a diplomatic dispute, but the relations are worsening and causing serious concern internationally. We'll be explaining why during the programme and asking what might happen next. But to examine the background to all of this in more detail, this report from Umi Kolsum Sharif. Simmering tensions between Somalia and Ethiopia are now a full-blown diplomatic dispute. Somalia has expelled Ethiopia's ambassador, recalled its envoy from Addis Ababa and ordered the closure of two of its consulates. That's in response to a controversial port deal between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland. The agreement made in January has led to a war of words between the two sides. What's new is that Ethiopia, which has long said that it would not be the first government to recognize Somaliland's independence, it would be the second, seems to have adjusted that view and decided to take the, the next step, which is to say that they would deal with Somaliland as an independent state. They have long-standing security, economic and political ties. So this is really um, just a, a step forward, albeit a dramatic one, uh, that has irritated the government in Mogadishu. Under a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, Somaliland has allowed its landlocked neighbour to lease part of its coastline where Ethiopia wants to set up a naval base and a commercial port on the Red Sea. In exchange, Ethiopia offered to recognize the breakaway region as an independent nation. Somaliland ceded from Somalia more than 30 years ago. But its independence is not internationally recognized and Mogadishu considers Somaliland part of its territory. In an interview with Al Jazeera in January, Somalia's president, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, accused Addis Ababa of annexing a part of what the country claims as its own. The issue is not will Ethiopia access to the sea. They are free to access throughout Somalia. Where? In everywhere in Somalia. But the question is how? How do they want to access the sea? By annexing part of Somalia and changing the borders of Somalia? This is what's going on right now. It is not a commercial. It is an annexation of territory. The latest rounds of tensions between Somalia and Ethiopia have been stirred by another Somali region. Puntlan is a federal member state of Somalia and has announced a new cooperation agreement with Addis Ababa. Puntlan has refused to recognize amendments to Somalia's constitution made earlier this week and is making moves towards more autonomy by pulling out of Somalia's federal system and wants to govern itself independently. What links the Somaliland and Puntland issues is that Ethiopia has this MOU with Somaliland and yesterday invited a delegation from Puntland to Addis Ababa to discuss enhanced relations between Ethiopia and Puntland. And that seems to have pushed Mogadishu or the, the Somali federal government to take this step of expelling Ethiopian diplomats. The deal is raising tensions in the Horn of Africa, a region already facing immense political instability. Further worries too in the Red Sea, where Houthi forces have been attacking ships and are being hit by the US and UK. Umikulsum Sharif, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. Well, let's discuss all of this now with our guest today. On Skype from Addis Ababa, Samuel Getachew is a political commentator specialising in Ethiopia. Joining us from London is Sharmaka Ali. He's an activist with the UK-Somali Land Alliance. 
And on Skype from Istanbul, Abdul Karim Jama, he's the chair of the Heritage Institute for Policy Studies, a think tank based in the Somali capital, Mogadishu. Thank you, all of you, for joining us today. Now, I've covered a lot of diplomatic stories in my time, and normally when I'm researching them, I think the best thing to do is go and have a look at the key document involved. Well, you try and look for this memorandum of understanding that was signed on the 1st of January, and you can't actually find a copy of it. The basic deal is to lease uh, land 20 kilometres of the coastland from Somaliland by Ethiopia for 50 years, isn't it, Samuel? But why don't we have all the details? Well, they've been quiet so far, the Ethiopian government as well as the Somaliland government. But what we know so far, the basis of... Uh, the agreement is to allow Ethiopia to use a port in Somaliland uh, in exchange for a share, perhaps a share in one of Africa's, or if not the best, uh, the most profitable uh, airlines in Africa, which is the Ethiopian Airlines. But the prime minister has been saying from the get-go that a population of uh, at least 120 million needs some kind of port, and that's why this was signed. You have to remember that uh, Somaliland also signed a deal with Dubai-based uh, DP World, and we didn't see a passionate opposition uh, to it uh, from Somalia. And we are as surprised as anyone that there is an opposition to something that's uh, going to be changing the makeup or the story of this continent that has been prone to conflicts and famine and so, so forth. But the underlying issue is Ethiopia needs some kind of force to be self-sufficient and feed a population that's in need. Sharmaka, yes, we mentioned there by Samuel of a previous deal in 2017 which seemed to collapse uh, for uh, Ethiopia to take a stake in the, in the existing port, the Berbera port. Um, there's an argument that Somaliland's been burnt one, b once before. And tell us, with regard to this particular plan, your understanding, is this just a naval base or is it also a commercial port? Because I saw dif I've seen different views on this. James, thank you very much for having me, first of all. Uh, that's an interesting question, but I disagree. I don't think it's a case of uh, someone's been burnt and a country hasn't been burnt. I think what, we, what we've seen is that Somaliland and Ethiopia are ready to actually be a pioneer in Africa. They've shown Africa and the world that they're ready to collaborate on a win-win principle. Uh, to ensure prosperity, peace uh, and development in the region. They want to show the world that actually Africans can work together and by working together, uh, we will achieve our goals and targets. And I think that's just a matter of fact. So that deal in 2016, uh, yes, was being negotiated, but you know how deals are. And this deal is exactly the same. The details are currently being ironed out. I interviewed the foreign minister of Somaliland, the Republic of Somaliland, a couple of days ago. And he said that the technical uh, aspect of the deal is almost complete. And very shortly, the details of the agreement will be ironed out. And Somaliland, being a democratic, peaceful country, uh, um, and as a result of you know, uh, uh, conditions on its con in its constitution, will actually present the deal to parliament. So this deal will not be hidden. It will be one that follows due process and which will be ratified by the parliament in Somaliland, in Hergesa, uh, and then present it to the world. Uh, but we can't put the cart before the horse. Abdul Karim, then, why is Somalia so upset? Uh, thank you, James. Uh, uh, I think the, the, the obsession is that basically Ethiopia, in this case, is uh, proposing to take part of Somalia and cut off another part and make it into a separate country. Uh, I don't believe any uh, self-respecting country in the world will accept that. This is no different than Somalia making deals with uh, Tigray or Amhara region or Oromia and uh, offering to give them recognition and uh, taking some part of Ethiopia and adding it to its territory. Uh, simply put, that's the issue. And this is an issue between two sovereign countries, uh, being Somalia and Ethiopia, uh, and not uh, between uh, uh, the regions of Somalia and other countries. Uh, that is the issue at hand. Uh, but it is, countries a, deal but, but it, countries it, it, it is, Abdul Karim, a little bit more complicated than that, isn't it? Because Somaliland, many would say, is a de facto country. The decisions of the president or the parliament in Mogadishu have no effect 
in, in Somaliland, and it's been the situation for, 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 for since 1991. So th this, is, this is well over three decades that the government in Mogadishu, and, and I know that's where you're based, um, doesn't really have any control over Somaliland at all. Uh, fair point, James. Uh, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that no country in this world uh, uh, supports uh, 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 or recognizes Somaliland as a separate country. Uh, Somaliland itself uh, 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 does not agree on uh, secession or becoming a separate country. There are five, five families in Somaliland, and four of them and half of the other do not recognize uh, uh, the idea of secession. Uh, I happen to be from that same region. Uh, one third of that uh, British territories of uh, former Somaliland uh, uh, has been uh, uh, cleared of uh, Hargeisa authorities and its military, and is now a recognized part of Somalia, SSC Khatumo. Uh, uh, and uh, Audal uh, region and Makhir region do not accept, and half of the uh, uh, people in Hargeisa and, and Bur'u do not accept secession. So this is not a a happy-go-lucky, peaceful, democratic uh, country that has a, a, a unanimous mission uh, that it's approaching. And it's the whole world recognizes it as part of Somalia, even if uh, uh, the Somali uh, authorities do not operate in, in, in Hargeisa. Well, let's look at what the two countries who've signed the deal, Somaliland and Ethiopia, get from the deal. Shamaka, if I can, you just heard there Abdul Karim saying no country recognises Somaliland, but that is the point of this deal, isn't it? Ethiopia is going to recognise Somaliland. It's going to become the first. James, do you know, um, the issue here is that a lot of commentators that you see on, you know, international news channels like yours um, are being intellectually dishonest. Somaliland stands in the right as its case is both legal and moral. Um, and I won't go around, you know, tribal arguments or emotional arguments, but I'll give you the facts very quickly. Somaliland is the eldest state when it comes to Somalia and actually most of the countries that it, it's neighbours with. Somaliland received its independence on the 26th of June, 1960, before, as I said, most of its neighbours. Uh, and Ethiopia recognises this fact, and that's why nothing will change. Shamaka, uh, it did, it did in, then choose... Shamaka, let, let's, let's not just select bits of history. It then ch did choose to join Somalia and become a component part of Somalia. It, it was free choice then, wasn't it, in the 1960s? Absolutely not, James. This is the fallacy that's presented on, uh, to the media. If you actually look at detail in terms of what happened, this, it was an actual illegal union. What happened was Somaliland's parliament at that time drafted a, a, a union uh, in agreement with the representatives from Somalia. And actually what happened was Somalia Italiana did what I call an Italian job on this union and passed a completely different uh, act of union, which in effect rendered that so-called act of union null and void from the get-go. And actually, if I give you a very quick example and a very quick history lesson, I'm sure you'll cover this in the future. In 1961, a British judge based in Somalia actually tried uh, British, uh, Somaliland soldiers for a coup they attempted in 1961. And he found and he ruled that he could not sentence these uh, soldiers who attempted the coup because there was no act of union which was ratified and he deemed it illegal. This happened in Mogadishu. So today to tell me that, you know, we joined with Somalia, I totally disagree. And what I say is it was an illegal occupation. And we heard President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud talking about an annexation of Somalia's territory. But actually, it was Somaliland that was annexed in 1960 on the 26th You've done of your June. history it's lesson. We've done your history lesson, but we've got a lot of things to discuss <laughs> about today, Thank you. if you don't mind. Samuel... Um, what does Ethiopia get out of this deal? I suppose that's pretty obvious when you look at the fact that Ethiopia is the second uh, largest country by population in Africa after Nigeria, and it is landlocked. It has no access to the sea. Let's just put everything in perspective. Uh, the, Somali gov the Somalian government in Mogadishu can hardly control the capital city, um, and they probably control a few buildings in Mogadishu, and that's it. Uh, but the reality is the Somaliland government has been signing deals uh, with different uh, countries. Uh, 
And uh, Ethiopia is not going to be the first country that's going to be recognizing Somaliland. Uh, it's also Taiwan. Uh, but the reality is this would give Ethiopia access to a port that's needed. Ethiopia has a fast-growing population, uh, at least 120 million by uh, estimation. Uh, and this would give Ethiopia access to a sea, and it would give uh, a mutual uh, benefit to the Somaliland government, including uh, share in Ethiopian Airlines, as I said. So this is going to be a shared prosperity between Somaliland and uh, Ethiopia, and hopefully it will also reach Somalia. Um, again, um, you know, we, we have yourself and my, uh, myself, we've covered uh, this country for the last three years, this region. This country has been going for, um, you know, conflicts and uh, um, war in the last three years. It doesn't need another conflict. Uh, what Ethiopia needs, what Ethiopia proposes is an engagement with Somalia, an engagement to Somaliland to try to bring this to a conclusion. Um, and insults going back and forth between Addis Ababa and, and Mogadishu doesn't help. But this is uh, going to go, move forward according to, the, according to the Ethiopian government, and it's needed to Ethiopia, and I hope it, it, goes, it moves forward. Abdul Karim, bring us up to date now, the latest developments. Somalia expelling Ethiopia's ambassador, recalling its own ambassador, uh, and demanding that two Ethiopian consulates... Uh, be closed. Why is this happening now? Because the original announcement of the deal was in January. What's the, what is the spark now? Uh, James, uh, good question. Uh, I think the, uh, obviously uh, the, the, the problem initially was that Ethiopia has decided uh, to make an agreement uh, uh, with a region of Somalia, uh, namely Somaliland, uh, and that was the problem, uh, and uh, uh, that's, that MOU did not find any support uh, from any country, no African country, European, U.S., uh, United Nations, all the multilateral organizations, African Union, EGAD, uh, Islamic countries, uh, non-aligned countries. Now, uh, we, have, we have been made to understand uh, by the powers that are mediating on this issue that, uh, for all practical purposes, the MOU uh, will be walked back uh, by Ethiopia, and that uh, that issue is not going anywhere. It will not happen. In fact, uh, uh, there was an effort to, to uh, uh, find a face-saving way of walking that back. Uh, uh, that has not happened. A meeting that was requested uh, with the president of Somalia and the prime minister did not take place. And now, when Ethiopia again meets one of the regions of Somalia, uh, namely Puntland, uh, to make a new agreements, that is a, a blatant interference in the internal affairs of Somalia. Uh, although so, so to be I clear, Abdul Karim, the, 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 the fact, Abdul Karim, just, just to be clear, the fact that a senior official from Puntland, I think it was the finance minister, was on a formal visit to Ethiopia just days before the decision was made uh, to kick out the ambassador and to withdraw uh, Somalia's ambassador, that may have been the spark for this. The, the efforts that were being made by uh, uh, other countries to mediate between Somalia and Ethiopia uh, uh, were making some progress. Uh, uh, and now, if Ethiopia has uh, put out a statement that they want to make an agreement with another region of Somalia, in this case, Puntland, yes, uh, uh, without, while ignoring uh, uh, that this is part of a sovereign country called Somalia, uh, just as the case was with Somaliland, uh, then there, it was necessary for the Somali government, as, as they put it, to uh, uh, make the statement and expel uh, uh, the ambassador and close the, the, the uh, order, the closing of the consulates. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is no different than Somalia making deals with regions of Ethiopia without the involvement and knowledge of the federal government of Ethiopia. OK. Sharmaka, um, closing consulates. I know that... Um, in Hugeza, the capital of Somaliland, they actually call it an embassy, the Ethiopian embassy, rather than consulate. Does Somalia have any power to close that? Does it have any ability to do what it's just ordered? Absolutely not, James. Uh, the reality is it will have zero impact on the ground. Like Somalia's usually attempts, uh, its usual attempts at nefariously undermining Somaliland. It's just a continuation uh, in terms of Somalia's policy towards Somaliland. Uh, actually, last year, Ambassador Deli 
Kadir uh, Bushra formally presented his credentials to President Musabihi Abdi of Somaliland, not to an administration or an entity in Mogadishu. Um, so how can they then tell uh, that ambassador to go home? It does not make sense, James. It's almost like Somalia telling Germany to close their uh, embassy in France. Like, it won't happen. In essence, Somalia has about as much impact on Somaliland as a student representative of the model UN. All talk and no impact on the ground, in my opinion. Thank you. Samuel, um, people will talk about the security Im implications of this because clearly you still have fighting going on uh, in Somalia. You still have al-Shabaab in Somalia and you still have an African Union mission. It was called AMISOM. It was then replaced by the African Union transition mission ATMIS. And that has Ethiopian troops serving in Somalia. Do you think they will be able to stay? Do you think there's any possibility Ethiopia might pull them out or that Somalia might order them out? Well, hopefully they will stay because they have been important. Ethiopian troops have been important to the reality of Somalia. But let me go back and address your guest. He keeps saying, uh, Ethio uh, comparing what's happening into Somaliland and Portland to, uh, to an example he's giving about Tigray or other regions of uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia has a functioning government. Ethiopian government controls 100% of the nation. That is a fact. So it's difficult to compare the experience of Ethiopia to what's happening in Somalia. Again, the, Somali gov the Somalian government can hardly control Mogadishu, let alone Somaliland or Portland. And that's why the Ethiopian government decided to deal with the Somaliland government. And I hope there will be some kind of compromise. I hope there will be some kind of understanding by the Mogadishu government that this deal is important, not just Ethiopia, because what's happening in Ethiopia affects the whole region. But I hope the Ethiopian troops stay. But again, we've seen attacks uh, on Ethiopians in, this, in Somalia in the past weeks. And that is yet to be uh, decided by the Ethiopian functioning government. Uh, and again, to your guest, um, he should stop comparing what's happening in Ethiopian regions uh, to his country. His country needs to be improved. It's his country needs support. And it needs to work with its neighboring countries uh, to move forward. Abdul Karim, let me bring you back in on the security implications of this, because Al Shabab, uh, Al Shabab also opposes this new deal for a naval base, and there are some analysts saying that all of this, this big row, could help Al Shabab recruit. What do you think of that? Uh, uh, no doubt. Uh, I want to address uh, first the uh, issue that uh, Sharmarka mentioned, uh, which is uh, which has to do with the. Uh, uh, lack of authority of Somalia. Every major international activity, whether it's the financing facility of uh, everything that goes on in Somaliland or the port of Berbera extension or uh, many consulates, all come with the clear admission of Somalia. The airplanes that land in Hargeisa have permission from Somalia to facilitate people who live there uh, going there. And he knows that. And so this idea that uh, there is no authority is, is not, not accurate. True. If Ethiopia does not close these missions, it is not like the Somalis will send an army. But that means Ethiopia will not recognize Somalia as a country, which means Somalia will not recognize Ethiopia as a country and will deal with it as subcomponent. So that is not uh, an issue uh, at hand. To go to the security, uh, your colleague, our colleague from Addis Ababa, mentions uh, that Somalia uh, doesn't control its country, but Ethiopia controls. I was in Addis Ababa for the African Union uh, a couple of weeks, few weeks ago, and have been advised that in all directions I cannot go out of Addis Ababa except by plane because of the rebels around. Ethiopia is as dysfunctional as any country in the world now. There are wars in every corner. It doesn't control most of the regions. And uh, uh, it just defaulted on its basic payments. So Somalia doesn't have the same problem. There are 80 plus ethnic groups at everybody, each on the other's throat. Somalia is one nation, one people, few political issues, but Absolute nothing compared lies. to the problems that Ethiopia has. So I don't think you should compare the two. Shamaka, is well, everyone well, you know, in. Well, well, I know. Well, I say, sorry, I quickly, say, quickly, Samuel, then. Quickly. Yeah, go on, Samuel. It, you know, you know, he said he was in Addis Ababa and he was told what's happening outside of Addis Ababa. We can hardly go to Mogadishu uh, and, and get out of a hotel 
uh, per se and to compare what's happening in Ethiopia, the challenges of Ethiopia to the challenges of Somalia, it's day and night. And I, th I think he should just uh, come out of, uh, you know, uh, the bubble and see what's happening in Ethiopia and Somalia and understand this decision to um, give Ethiopia access would benefit his country as much as Ethiopia and Somaliland. Sharmaka, is everyone in Somaliland, I know you're in London right now, but is everyone convinced by this deal? Because I saw that soon after the deal was announced, Somaliland's own defence minister resigned and said Ethiopia remains our enemy. James, you know what the interesting fact is? Uh, Somalia usually tries to use that as a negative. But actually, in my view, it's a positive. Somaliland is a democracy and allows for alternate views and allows for people to hold differing opinions. It was his right to resign, and it is any citizen of Somaliland's constitutional right to oppose. But however, that's not the case on the ground. The majority support this deal because they see that the future the future is bright for Somaliland. Recognition is important. Relations with Ethiopia is important. And Somalia is just trying to distract from its internal failures, uh, where the government provides zero public services. Uh, all the embassies, so-called embassies they talk about, are based in bunkers in Halana. Uh, they provide nothing for their citizens. So rather than focus on Somaliland, Somalia should focus on securing its government in Muqtushu, where al-Shabaab is making considerable gains, not because of Somaliland's agreement with Ethiopia, but actually because of Somalia's ac actions. Somalia OK, went into an agreement I'd like to Turkey. bring in Samuel. I'd like to bring in Samuel quickly. We, we don't have a lot of time, Samuel. But how do we stop this? It's diplomatic row. How do we stop this escalating? We, I mean, we need the African Union. We need some kind of conversation. This, this continent, this region has been at war for many, many years, and they need to sit down and bridge the differences and come up with a conclusion, because what's happening in Ethiopia, a country with 120 million people, affects other countries. And I hope that our Somali brothers and sisters understand this is to the benefit to the region, not just Ethiopia. Abdul Karim, same question to you. How do you stop this becoming more than a diplomatic spat? Uh, look, uh, James, uh, I, I think uh, you're absolutely right. We will be neighbors uh, uh, for eternity. Nobody's moving out of the region. Somalia and Ethiopia need to coexist. And the way to coexist is to respect each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity and unity. Somalia should not undermine Ethiopia by uh, dealing with its regions. Ethiopia should do the same. Commercial ties uh, have happened before, can happen again with the entire region. Somalia joined the East African community. Hopefully, Ethiopia will join one day. We're looking for a pan-African system, not to divide and undermine each other's internal territories, but to collaborate and find success and a win-win situation. That comes only if we respect each other and not tear each other up. Thank you very much, all three of you, for joining us today. Our guests, Samuel Getachew, Shamaka Ali and Abdul Karim Jama. If you've joined us halfway through today's discussion or if the phone rang at some point, we've got you covered. You can watch this and any of our programmes at any time by going to our website, aljazeera.com. If you have your own thoughts or comments on this issue, post them at our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story or find us on X at AJ Inside Story from me, James Bays, and the team here in Doha. Please stay safe. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.